Welcome to this uh, final edition of Old Testament literature. Uh, we're going to look at some advice, uh, some advice from Scripture and my personal advice of how to go forward now that this class is ending. Um, we will have one more lecture for those who need to take the final exam. Um, we'll have a study a guide, short study guide, but uh, today we are final time together as a whole class. And so uh, I wanted just to give some advice about how to go forward in terms of uh, reading effectively the Old Testament. And so uh, let's dive right in. So uh, this will be advice for uh, the future how to approach the Old Testament. As always, please uh, make a forum post and one reply that will be in place of the attendance uh, quiz. So what we're going to look at is just one thing, and that is the suggestions that I have for reading the Old Testament more effectively. And uh, the first, I would say, is just read God's Word. Um, many people who are believers uh, will come and they believe, you believe the Bible, but you've never really read through the whole thing. Well, um, God's Word is living and active. God's Word is important. And so you should uh, have a strategy to uh, work through it and work through it on a regular basis. And so the first suggestion I would have is maybe to try this one-year uh, Bible. Um, many uh, translations are available. It's nice. Uh, they have usually four sets of readings uh, per day, one Old Testament, one New Testament, one Psalms, and one uh, in the Proverbs. And it, you know, it usually takes 12 minutes, something like that. Uh, I encourage you to get one of those Bibles. Uh, I wouldn't be hung up if you miss a day. In fact, if it takes you two years to read through, well, uh, you're better off than if you've never read it through once. So, um, Get, get a one-year Bible, try that, uh, and maybe if you've done it in one translation, try another translation. The ESV is good, the NIV is good, the NLT is good. They all do different things. So uh, try that. Another thing that uh, I found helpful is the Audible Bible. Um, you can get the Audible Bible in the ESV. That's the uh, version that I have, and... Um, uh, listen to it if you have a long uh, car journey regularly. Uh, that's a great way to redeem the time one way or uh, another. Um, also, uh, if, maybe try listening to a whole book. Uh, you know, what does Hosea say? What What's the main point? Sometimes when our Bibles are um, divided up by verses, we kind of get hung up on every little thing and just, uh, you know, fixate on that when really if we would step back and look at the whole, then the um, individual verses would be much easier to understand. So those are three good ways uh, that you can just get m more exposure to the Old Testament. And uh, God's Word does say this about itself, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the Word of our God will stand forever. Uh, even in heaven, God's word is still going to be important. Um, uh, God inspired it. It's uh, perfect. And uh, it's going to stand. The opinion of man won't stand, but God's word will. Um, Psalm 19 uh, says this, the law of the Lord is perfect, um, reviving the soul. Uh, I imagine you've experienced uh, stretches in life before where your soul needed reviving, uh, where you're just overwhelmed. Paul can say, we despaired of living uh, one time. And um, God's word says it's perfect and it revives the soul. Uh, the testimony is sure, making wise the simple. Uh, there is a simplicity about Christianity, um, and at times uh, 
uh, people can come with a naivete, but uh, God's word says that the testimony of the Lord is so uh, great that it makes wise even simple. And if you ever needed wisdom, um, the Bible is saying this is how you get it. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether, more to be desired than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Bible makes a a clear statement about itself and the importance of itself and uh, we as christian people should take heed to that second uh, thing i might give as an uh, um, suggestion to understand god's word better is to pray god's word um, come to various portions of scripture and pray through it on a regular basis uh, and you know the lord's prayer starts off continually pray like this that's what it says uh, in the greek uh, pray this over and over uh, maybe the words aren't uh, as important they're two different versions and they're slightly different so it's not saying um, you know just recite the words it's saying pray what they mean and if the text is saying to do that about the lord's prayer uh, why not the other prayers in scripture why not uh, Paul's prayers and Daniel's prayer and Daniel 9? And uh, why not a list of the promises? Pray through Ezekiel 36, 22 through 36. Pray through the New Covenant in Jeremiah 31. Pray through the section in Romans 7. And ask God to give you insight and ask God uh, to help you. And just point out that uh, book two of the Psalter that ends in Psalm 72, it ends with the statement, the prayers of David, the son of Jesse, are ended. In other words, the two first books of the Psalms are actually prayers that David uh, would pray. And uh, uh, one of those, Psalm 72, is actually written by Solomon. And so David is praying a psalm. Uh, that Solomon had written. Well, if David does that, why shouldn't we do that too? So second thing I would suggest is pray through uh, scripture. Um, third thing that I found helpful is memorize uh, scripture. If you want to understand what the big picture is, start meditating on God's word. And there's no better way to meditate than to uh, memorize. And so Ezekiel 36, 22 through 36, I've had you uh, memorize it here. Uh, if you work on that memorization a couple more times, you can get it to your long-term memory and you'll uh, be able just to uh, say it uh, uh, straight out uh, forever. But you're going to have to work a little to get it there. Um, if you do that, if you memorize God's word, if you meditate on it, uh, you'll be surprised at how much that will open up the meaning of Scripture to you. Uh, another great thing to memorize is Genesis 1, 1 to 5. Um, it uh, shows us God's uh, great power. And then the New Testament comes along and says, not only did God create the world that way, but it's actually a foreshadowing of the work that he does in new creation. And so the same God who said, let there be Light is the God who has shown in our hearts. Uh, that's what uh, Paul says, and John says nearly the same thing. And so um, if you want to learn how to put the pieces together in a way uh, that will be very fruitful, uh, that's a great uh, suggestion. And maybe memorize some of the promises in Deuteronomy 6. God said that you should say that prayer when you get up and when you go to sleep at night and when you walk in the way it must be pretty important um, so uh, why not follow that great advice psalm 119 11 says i've stored up your word in my heart that i might not sin against you and i still remember as a child memorizing that word if i hid my heart that i might not sin against thee and um 
if that's true, then why not memorize parts of Scripture? Uh, Deuteronomy 6 says, And these words that I commend you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in the house and when you walk by the way. When you lie down and when you rise, you'll bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes, and you shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. God's word's important. Why not uh, uh, acknowledge that importance by taking some time to memorize scripture? Uh, another thing that I found really helpful and that we've gone over and over in this class is there are four good questions you can always ask of a passage, and it will help you put together the meta narrative. One is if the story is positive, how is it like Jesus? You know, many people will come to the David and Goliath story, and the moral is kind of be like David, you know, show courage, fight. Fight your enemies, you know, take the five uh, smooth stones of tithing and of sharing your faith and of worship, you know, and defeat your enemies. Well, I think that's probably the wrong way to approach the Bible. That's kind of a moralistic way. A much better way is to ask the question, how is Jesus like David? How does he fight a, an enemy for us? And how is his victory uh, our victory? Um, um, I think when you do that, uh, it's much clearer how the meta narrative is going to fit together. So the story is positive. How is it like Jesus? Is it positive when they leave slavery and go headed to the promised land? Well, how is that like Jesus leading us out of slavery to sin? How is it like Jesus leading us into the promised land and tearing down strongholds and, and creating the Garden of Eden here uh as we live our, our lives. If the story is positive, how is it like Jesus? And the opposite, if the story is negative, how is it a contrast to Jesus? So when David stays at home, he should be fighting battles, but he decides to stay home. Uh, well, how is that unlike Jesus? Well, Jesus never stayed home from any battle. Um, Jesus is always doing what the king should do. And he's never peeping on the rooftop, and he's never falling into adultery. He's never covering up hypocrisy uh, because David is um, kind of like Jesus, but he he's flawed, and Jesus is perfectly uh, righteous, and he's the perfect king. So if the story is negative, uh, how is it a contrast to what Jesus did? Um, you can always ask, how does the story relate uh, to the Garden of Eden, you know, when women, as we've seen, are excluded from the earthly tabernacle and the tabernacle looks like Eden. Well, how is that unlike Eden? Well, in Eden, women weren't excluded. And, and in fact, in the restoration of Eden, uh, women won't be excluded either. And so uh, by looking back to the original uh, creation, you get a very good sense of how to interpret the story. And Jesus does that uh, when he talks about marriage, you know, people point out, well, you know, all these people were uh, polygamists. Uh, well, um, was polygamy part of Eden? No, it wasn't part of Eden. Uh, will polygamy be part of re restored Eden? Well, no, it won't be part. And so when you look back at what goes before, oftentimes that will help you interpret the story. And by the same token, looking forward to the in the eschatological consummation. How How is it like Jesus if it's positive? How is it unlike Jesus if it's negative? How is it related to the Garden of Eden? And how is it related to the eschaton? Those four questions have been uh, questions that I bring to the text over and over again. And I've been amazed at how much that will make the stories pop uh, for me and help me understand why certain things are presented as they are. Another thing you can do is uh, look to Jesus as the author and finisher of your faith. Um, when you come to the story, the story isn't about you. It isn't about the greatness of you. It's about Jesus and that Jesus is the one who starts your faith and Jesus is the one who perfects your faith. And so um, when you're reading in the Old Testament, that's a great thing you can do. Look 
uh, to Jesus as the one who starts it and the one who perfects it. And Hebrews uh, says that, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. How looking to Jesus, the founder, the author, the archagos, uh, it says in uh, Greek, um, and the perfecter of our faith. Um, when, when you're in the battle and you just feel like you can't go on, well, what are you to do? You're to look to Jesus as the author and finisher of your faith. That's why Jesus can say things like, um, this is the word of God that you believe in him who God has sent. Um, what, what is the real work of God? The real work of God is to believe on the person, on the goodness, on the power, on the wisdom, on the perfection of Jesus, on Jesus as our sanctification, on Jesus as the answer to everything. And that's why uh, Jesus can say, and he said it to Matthew, and it must have connected uh, with Matthew. He's the only one who records this long uh, sermon, but uh, Jesus started that sermon by saying, blessed are the spiritually bankrupt. When you realize that you don't, that in my flesh dwells no good thing, that uh, as Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. When you get that truth, Jesus says, blessed are the spiritually bankrupt, for theirs is the kingdom of the heavens. Um, another thing you can do is uh, take your questions to God. Uh, God is big enough to handle your questions. And so when you um, read a text and it just doesn't make sense and you try the different ways, well, um, go to the author. Uh, go to the author and ask. Uh, James says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. You know, when you come and you're uh, to the text and you are confused about uh, these laws, you can come to God and say, you know, God, I, I just don't get why this is in here. I don't get how the stories uh, come together, fit together in a whole Bible, biblical uh, theology. And the scriptures say, ask God, ask God to help. First uh, Kings 3, 9, give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to govern this, your great people? Solomon asked for wisdom, and God made him the wisest man who ever lived, uh, apart from Jesus. He, he's the wisest, uh, simply human man who ever lived. And if God can do that, he can, um, he can give us wisdom. He can help us understand. So take your questions uh, to God. And Proverbs 2 says, uh, My son, if you receive my words and treasure up my commandments with you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding, yes, if you will call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it, hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and you will find the knowledge of God. Take your questions to God. Ask him. Um, and lastly, I would say, um, read and listen to teachers from the past. Uh, often in a culture, we just are so caught up with reading the latest book, you know, and, uh, somebody comes out with a book and then 10 years later, they're renouncing the faith. Well, why not read books that have stood the test of time? Uh, people who have run the race well and, um, their books are being reprinted a uh, thousand years after they die or 1500 years. Um, there are people like that who have been helpful to Christians over the ages. So why not, um, why not invest some time in those, uh, books? And for me, you know, John Bunyan's, uh, guy like that wrote Pilgrim's Progress, a great, insightful book. It's been helpful, uh, to many. Spurgeon, uh, read Pilgrim's Progress once uh, every year of his life. It helped him so much. 
Another guy, a great commentator, John Gill, his commentaries are free on the internet. Uh, I don't know of any pastor who is his intellectual equal. Um, he is a fantastic commentator, uh, a great pastor, and he served the church well for hundreds and hundreds of years. Uh, Spurgeon, my goodness, his um, commentary on the Psalms, the treasury of David, again, free on the internet, but uh, uh, people have been reading that over and over and over again. And for my money, that commentary is the best commentary on any book of the Bible written by anyone ever. Um, it's just uh, incredible how effective that is. Augustine, uh, most people would say in the first thousand years of Christianity, other than Jesus and the, uh, his apostles, who, who's the greatest thinker, um, most people would say Augustine and uh, his confessions, his city of God, very helpful uh, work, a very good thinker, very articulate uh, young man. Um, Justin Martyr, there's hardly anything that we've talked about in this class that Justin Martyr didn't already talk about uh, in 160. Uh, his dialogue with Trifo is uh, much as this class has been a kind of whole Bible biblical theology, fantastic thinker, um, died for the faith, uh, being an apologist for the faith. John Owen, vice chancellor of um, Oxford University, um, the man who found a publisher for Pilgrim's Progress, the most printed Christian book other than the Bible. Uh, John Owen is anyone's intellectual equal, and he is a godly man, a great husband, a uh, loving father, um, and there are few like him in the church. Of course, Calvin is always a good read, and Luther and um you might add Jonathan Edwards uh, to that, the great American um, uh, writer. So as we come to um, conclude, um, those are my suggestions. Uh, maybe uh, you will find something that uh, uh, is more helpful for you, maybe a reading regularly with uh, someone else, maybe meet uh, early uh, one morning in a coffee shop and just work uh, together. Um, a lot of people have found that kind of thing very, very helpful. Uh, but I can say this, that the Bible is going to pay you back. Um, the Bible will stand up to uh, rigorous study and scrutiny, and the Bible will pay you back. And so these are my suggestions as we end our uh, Old Testament literature uh, class, um, you know, the s seven, if I can remember them in order, um, you know, uh, read God's word, uh, come up with a way, you know, one year Bible, something like that, uh, pray God's word, get a word document, just start putting the promises and prayers in there and pray that every day as part of your uh, routine. Um, memorize uh, God's uh, word. Um, you'd be amazed at how that's going to help. Uh, fourth thing is ask four questions. How's it like Jesus? How's it a contrast to Jesus? How does it uh, point to uh, Eden and how does it point to the eschaton? Um, uh, fifth thing, uh, ask uh, God in humility. Um, if if you need wisdom, ask him. Um, sixth thing, don't be afraid to, to bring God your questions. Uh, God's uh, shoulders are big enough, um, and uh, he's going to help you. And the last thing is find some good teachers, uh, teachers from the past, teachers who have stood the test of time, and start reading to see how they tackle issues and I think you'll be amazed at how much that will encourage you in your reading and how much that will help you. Listen, I have really enjoyed our class together. Thank you so much for your hard work and the homework. Um, uh, again, remember, if uh, you've done all the homework assignments and you've 
listened, uh, attended or listened to all the lectures. And um, if you do your memory verses and you have an A for that, then you don't have to take the final exam. Um, if you do have to take the final exam, um, for Friday's video, we'll do a short uh, study guide. But I want you guys to know I'm praying for you. Uh, pray that the Lord keeps you safe. Thank you so much for uh, taking this class, and I'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks.